Hey folks, welcome back. Today it's about this preset here in the background. It's called Misha and it's a recreation of the Eurorack module by Eventide. Looks like this here and it's out for quite some time now and um, someone last last year asked me this on Patreon here, Alexander. Um, I was wondering if it's possible to recreate the behavior of this new Eventide sequencer Misha. So this is what's around last year, May 2022. And I tried to give some support to actually recreate this in the grid. And I built something in the grid and I sent it over. And then I completely forgot about it to actually finish it and flesh it out. And uh, last week, a friend of mine, Skyans, uh, told me about this Eventide module here. And I remembered that I did something like this some way back and I loaded up the preset and saw that it's not finished. And yesterday or over the weekend, I just finished it up. So, and that's it here basically. And I want to explain you in this video how this works. And also you can download this patch on my Patreon with the lowest tier. So you need to invest one buck to actually get the you know, become a Patreon or maybe just sub subscribe you on YouTube uh, with the membership option. There's a button uh, below this video so you can download this patch then. But I also explain it in this video how it works and uh, what I did. So you can recreate it basically from this video if you want to. And I also see here a bug. So this is um, wrong, um, wrong name. So this is where you can play the current note. So how this works is, um, like I said, you can step through the scale um, of a dialed in scale and you can use these buttons here to actually skip through it or step through it. So inside here, um, you always play the scale of C major. So everything in here is dialed in to or tuned to C major. So you can reset the note here. And there's also a virtual keyboard here at the top. You can see what's happening. Or actually, you can't see what's happening because the gate length is too short for this keyboard. So you have to dial in here the latch so it holds the note. So this is the current note or the root reset. A root reset. Um, where you bring back the, the, the current note to the root note. And then you can use these buttons here to skip through the scale. Or you can use two. You can already see we stay within one octave so it never exceeds one octave and um, this way it's it's easy to build this way uh, on the original Misha you actually can go up higher you can go to um, I don't I don't know three octaves higher or unlimited octaves higher uh, but within this uh, preset here you always stay within one octave I don't know it's a feature or it's a bug um, at least for me I found it easier to implement that way because we just wrap around here with the with the merge module okay so then you can also not press only these trigger buttons here, which is not really nice to do, but it's nice to actually use it to um, feed the sequencer here, which I explain later. Um, but you can also use the keyboard to control this thing, right? So instead of using here my external MIDI keyboard, I'm just using also using here this virtual keyboard. So you can see what I'm doing. So this is the input keyboard. Basically, this is what you can use as your external keyboard or your MIDI keyboard. And you can play here to root reset something. You can see we have to play D sharp three, um, which is this one here. Okay. 
and then we play the current note in the scale because we can skip through the scale so we can play the current note which is this one okay and then to go plus one we use here um, f3 so it's this one right so this is the current note plus one minus one plus two minus two plus three you know and so on so it's completely symmetrical so that's i think that's also the original mapping of the even titan misha that's when you basically connect the midi keyboard and it works exactly the same way if you don't like this mapping you can change it to whatever you want so you can see here i'm using um g3 for plus two right so you can dial in anything you want here so you can recreate or create a different mapping if you don't like that so but for the default setting here current note plus one uh, plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, and so on. And the big benefit of using the keyboard as an input is also that you can change the gate length. So you can just hold a note. Here these view meters basically tell you what key I'm pressing on the keyboard. And um, yeah, because this go uh, gate length is because I'm using the gate length of the keyboard input here as an output. But when you press these trigger buttons here, it just gives you basically a very short burst of L1. And most of these yeah, virtual keyboards here don't recognize this as a note. So you have to use a gate length here at the end, maybe make this a bit longer. And then it gets recognized, right? Um, so yeah, so you can use the keyboard, you can use these buttons, and then you can um, also use here the sequencer to just record something. So um, maybe close this down. I'm using here reset button. The reset basically um, resets the write index right to one. So you start at the first step of the sequence. So just press this two times here. There's no single press in Bitwig Studio for some reason. I don't know why. Um, and then you can uh, press record here. And then it s gives you basically this um, view meter here as a symbol that it's recording. And then you can start and press some notes. And then I think you can just hit play. And it doesn't work. <laughs> because I have to fix it. Um, I will fix this here. But you can start record then and can uh, play back the sequence. You can also change here the sequence um, gate steps for the rhythm here, for the trends, so we can... So it's my usual triggers used with the clock quantizer to a 16 note grid. So you can change here the number basically here and get some nice rhythms out of this. Um, the sequencer is just a... A small addition it's i don't know if it makes sense but i just wanted to have this in there um to yeah just record some small 16 step sequences but you can also just uh, record the midi output here of this um, preset and write it into a clip which is probably better to do um, another thing i did was to actually transpose everything so like I told you in the beginning, everything in here is in C major. So you can say, um, I want to transpose this maybe to D sharp major, right? So everything that comes out of here is still C now, but in the post FX, I just transpose it up by three semitones. So now the root note here is D sharp. Um, this one here, or you can go up to E. Right, so this is now the root note, so everything is transposed up. 
And then I found it pretty easy to just uh, then implement here a key filter after that. So you can use then different scales. Um, I haven't checked if this is actually working correctly, but I think it should. Um, so instead of major, now we have natural minor. And then we can skip here through the scale. Maybe go back here to D sharp. You can see we pay perfectly here the D sharp minor scale. Or back to major. Right. So you can change this to um, um, the internal workings are basically the same. I thought about maybe just changing here the intervals when you change the mode, but it's yeah, yeah the patching would be then much more complicated to do that. Um, but so you know, you can also dial in here your own scale. So what I dialed in here is basically the major scale. Um, so it's zero, right? There's no uh, so zero pitch uh, alternation here, then two semitones up, four semitones up, five semitones up, and so on. So you can dial in your own scale if you want to, or maybe change the scale on the fly. So this is also possible. So this is here, yeah, so you know, this merge and these transpose modules are basically the scale. And I skip through this merge module here with these buttons. So that's basically all I'm doing. Um, then after the mode here, we have also chords. So we can hit this and then you play basically uh, major, major chords. But the, the transpose and the mode or the key filter is after the chords. So these chords are also then corrected and um, changing when you change here the intervals. Minor. So you can see we skip up here and then the chords change when there should be a minor chord and so on. Um, so this also works. Then there's a wrapper in there. This is my uh, my wrapper preset I also showed you on this channel. So um, the wrapper tries basically to keep the notes from the from the chords within the scale. So it looks like this. Oh, just. So basically when here the upper note ex goes beyond or exceeds the scale or the octave, then it's wrapped around to the lowest or one octave lower. So this is also something you can do. And uh, what else do we have? Yeah, there's also a latch here so you can hold the chords if you want to. So it just press the note once and then it holds the note until you press another note. Okay. So I think it's not hard to get what it's actually doing. And yeah, I have to fix the sequencer here. Maybe it's also not really important to have the sequencer. Uh, but it's, you know, you can reset it, then record the sequence uh, after 16 steps, then it stops recording and you can hit play and then it plays the note sequence over and over again and it's synchronized to the project tempo. So this is basically my Misha clone here for Bitwig Studio. Uh, it's a bit more complicated than it is actually. I needed to get around certain things in the grid so for instance, holding here the current note with the long delay. So I basically using here feedback for the notes. So I'm playing a note, then I hold the note, feed it back, then I add additional um, plus one, plus two, right to this to this current hold it, uh, signal, and then add it up. So I can iterate here through the merge uh, module easily. 
Um, yeah, like I said, this is available on my Patreon for one buck, for um, which is the lowest tier. Um, I spent a bit of time over the weekend on this, so um, would be great if you actually <laughs> subscribing. But you can also try to rebuild it from this uh, video here, or like I said, you can also subscribe to the YouTube membership. Uh, thing here below the video it's also possible so i also share it here on youtube okay so that's it thanks for watching leave a like if you like the video and hit me up with the questions in the comments thanks for watching and see you in the next video bye